Okay. Hello. Welcome to this primary candidate forum co-sponsored by the Daily Record newspaper and the League of Women Voters. My name is Charlie Sorensen and I'm the Voter Services Chair for the League of Women Voters, Kittitas County. Founded in 1920, the League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization with 800 affiliates across the country. It encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League never endorses candidates or political parties at any level. We don't care how you vote, we just care that you vote. League membership is open to all genders, ages 16 and over, and we invite you all to join us. Our moderator for this primary candidate virtual forum event is Catherine Murphy. Catherine has been a member of the League since 2017, where she has filled a variety of roles at the state and local level. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Charlie. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to moderate our virtual 2020 primary candidate forums. These events offer voters an opportunity to hear directly from candidates in response to questions sourced from inside the community. As with everything else right now, we are learning how to modify traditional in-person events with virtual ones. The League of Women Voters records and retains a full unedited copy of all candidate forums. If any portion of a League forum is redistributed out of context to make a candidate appear to say something they did not say, or are edited to make a candidate look bad or in any way they did not actually look in the original forum, then the League of Women Voters will alert the media, provide the unedited video for comparison and file appropriate complaints with any applicable gover governing authority. For the virtual 2020 primary forums, we record each candidate interview using the same structure, a 60 second opening statement 90 second responses to three community sourced questions and a 60 second closing statement. The forum recordings are being offered in two formats. Viewers can re watch each interview as a standalone choice and they can watch a five part playlist which shows all candidates in the order they appear on the ballot answering the same question in a compiled video. Part one includes this introduction and each candidate's opening statement. Parts two through four show each question being asked, then the candidate's responses. Part five shows each candidate's closing statements plus my closing remarks. The forum recordings are available on the League of Women Voters of Kittitas County website and our YouTube channel, the Ellensburg Daily Record website and on Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Channel 191 and Inland Networks. For tonight's forum we're, is for the Kittitas County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff is the Chief Executive Officer and Conservator of the Peace of the County. This is a four-year term. Two candidates are running for this position, Clay Myers and Bart Olson. Now I want to welcome Bart Els Olson to the forum. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. We will start with your 60-second opening statement. Hello everybody. Thank you very much to the League of Women Voters for hosting this. And my name is Bart Olson and I want to be your next Kittitas County Sheriff. I live in the Thorpe area with my wife, Brenda. We've been married for almost 25 years and our daughter Madeline was born and raised here. She is in her third year in college uh, studying a nursing degree. I just completed a 25 year career with the Washington State Patrol and I retired as a Sergeant here in Ellensburg. I have 28 years total law enforcement experience. I was uh, hired as a reserve officer when I, while attending college at Central Washington University. And I obtained a degree in uh, law and justice and a psychology minor while at Central Washington University. Uh, after serving as a reserve officer, I was hired in the jail. I worked in the jail for a year and a half, then hired by the State Patrol where I was a Mancha cadet, went to the State Patrol Academy, and then I was assigned North Bend and then in Ellensburg. And in 2013, I promoted to Sergeant where I was in charge of a detachment of troopers and then in Ellensburg. Thank you. Thank you. I went quicker than I thought. 
and I just lost my presentation. Question number one, how will you protect employees, jail staff, visitors, and jail inmates from COVID-19 infection? Mr. Olson, you have 90 seconds to respond. Thank you. I think it's very important that uh, we in law enforcement protect all of our employees through training and uh, giving them all the proper uh, protective equipment needed uh, to do their jobs. Um, while, while at the jail, jail staff should be wearing their uh, PPEs at all times, and any inmates that are being brought into the facility should be checked within the Sally Port uh, area uh, prior to leaving the patrol car. Their temperature should be checked, and they should be asked questions before entering the facility, uh, health questions related, related to COVID. Um, as far as the staff goes, like I said, we should train them, monitor them, give them all the equipment. And then for people coming into the facility, I think it's very important that the same precautions take place uh, before they enter the facility. And they're, they're separate from the inmates, so that shouldn't be a problem uh, by, by plexiglass in the, the room. So they should be able to still converse with their loved ones uh, while maintaining safety to them and the staff. Uh, and then all the people that are coming in there are documented uh, as far as their information. Uh, so if there is an exposure, uh, then we can act quickly uh, for our staff and for the people who have been in the facility. Uh, I think it's important to uh, just always maintain that uh, we're going to do what we can to protect people coming and going from the jail facility at all times. Thank you. Question two, what changes to training policies or procedures would you support to ensure the Sheriff's Department is free of bias when interacting with Black, Indigenous, people of color, and other traditionally marginalized groups? Mr. Olson, you have 90 seconds for your response. I think it's very important that we follow the guidelines of the uh, uh, the Criminal Justice Training Center here uh, within the state. Um, they have put out recent trainings in the past years, including uh, uh, crisis intervention training, which has been very helpful. And I have seen use of force uh, incidents has gone, uh, go straight uh, way down and it allows people to un understand uh, what people are going through. So I think the same could be said with, uh, you know, bias training. I, I, I went to bias training last year. Uh, there was many agencies that were at that training and I, I found the training to be very helpful. And that would be something I would encourage uh, uh, all officers to continue to do, continue online, uh, online bias training, in-person bias training when possible. And, excuse me. And then um, I definitely think that uh, one of the things for uh, toward, towards this training I'd like to see is emotional intelligence training. I think that is the most important thing in law enforcement. It allows you to be sympathetic, empathetic, and compassionate with people and be able to understand people. Uh, that would be one of the things I would like to see along with this bias training. And I think that would have uh, allow people to have a better understanding of uh, what's going on. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Question number three, how do you view the relationship between county law enforcement and immigration and customs enforcement, ICE? What, if anything, would you change about the current relationship? Mr. Olson, you have 90 seconds to, to reply. Well, I, I think it's really important that uh, we have an obligation to respect all the judicial uh, uh, agencies and judicial processes, including uh, ICE. And um, I really think it's important that, uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna refer to my notes here, I have on this as well. Um, but I, I think we always need to, uh, we need to honor and uh, uh, protect the officer in the field, but we also need to continue to honor and protect the civil rights of every person uh, uh, that we contact. Um, so, 
the, any contracts that are in place in the jail, I think they need to remain in place. I do know one of the contracts uh, for the county jail is going to uh, expire next year, and at that point, it will not be renewed. Um, and and that's for that's for housing certain inmates. Uh, but uh, any any person, um, as far as ICE goes, uh, ICE's pr uh, main concern is with the people uh, that may be undocumented in this uh, country and committing crimes. And that, that is one of the things I'm very, uh, I'm very passionate about is that uh, if you're committing a crime, you need to be held accountable. And at that point, if it's a criminal act of some sort and uh, it meets ICE's requirements, then uh, we would support ICE and what they need to do to, to do their job. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Olson, you now have 60 seconds to make your closing statement. Hey, I want to be your next kid to task County Sheriff. I think there's a need for accountability, professionalism and transparent transparency in all law enforcement, including our Sheriff's office. And it's something that I plan on doing and leading by example, like I've done throughout my 28 career. 28 year career uh, in law enforcement. I have built a reputation of trust, respect, accountability, professionalism, and I have uh, incident command training and command experience as a sergeant and acting lieutenant in Ellensburg. Uh, I believe our uh, community deserves a choice. The, the current position is just a filled position, appointed position, and um, there was only one person that submitted uh, uh, to that position. Um, so uh, we deserve a choice. I have 20 years of law, law enforcement experience. I'm college educated and I am passionate about my job. And I believe I'm approachable and will be for citizens and employees. Thank you. As we can, I would like to thank uh, Bart Olson for joining us at this forum and for sharing your views with the voters of Kittitas County. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank As we much. conclude, I want to remind everyone that our ballots should arrive by July 17th. And we have until 8 p.m. on August 4th to return them. If you're not registered or need to change your address, you have till the 27th to do so online or by mail. After July 27th, you can register, update your registration, or vote in person through 8 p.m. on August 4th at the county auditor's office. If you don't get your ballot, be sure to call or visit the county auditor's office right away. To get more information about all of the candidates running in the 2020 primary, the Kittitas League has created a nonpartisan online voters guide. You'll find links to candidate websites and other helpful resources you can get information also at vote411.org and at the Washington State Secretary of State's office. Thank you to the candidates who made time to participate in this event. The Kittitas County League also wants to thank the Daily Record newspaper for co-sponsoring the virtual 2020 primary forums and to Ellensburg Community Television, Spectrum Network and Inland Networks for showing the forum videos throughout the county. Finally, thank you to the many league volunteers who made this event possible. Your vote matters. Join me by casting your ballot in the August 4th primary. Thank you. <laughs>